Amen. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. God bless you. I love you. Amen. What a joy. What an absolute thrill. What a great day. Amen. Let's hold them high. Let's hold them high because we believe this is the perfected word of God. I believe that in the volume of this book speaks about my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. I desire not only to read it, to know it, but through the power of God's Holy Spirit to live it, right? To live it. Amen. Turn with me, if you would, this morning to Deuteronomy chapter 26, front of your Bible, and then move back a few chapters. Many times people call this Moses' swan song. Very important. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 reads as follows Moses speaking under the influence of God the Holy Spirit, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Lord, bless your word this morning. Thank you. Most any man can father a child. But you know what? It does not end there. Contrary to worldly belief, it does not end there. Now, we're in a battle. We're in a battle for the, the family. And Satan knows that better than we do. He knows the minute he begins to separate the family, he's got the society. That's simply proven through history, time and time again. And we're in that battle right now. So most any man can father a child, but it does not end there. When a child is fathered, the man has become a dad. No matter how hard society is trying to strip that reality from our lives, it still remains that when a child is fathered, the man has become a dad. Now moms and dads together are important, yes, yet their roles are different and semi-exclusive. Now, in general, in general, moms bring the role of femininity and comfort. In general, moms bring femininity and comfort. Dads, in general, bring masculinity and courage into the picture. And of course, that is God's design. So anytime something is God's design, it is as good as it's ever gonna get. Now it may not always be represented well, because we as dads are flawed. We have our problems, we have our issues. But God's design is as it can't get any better, it can't be improved. And of course, in our modern day society, and technically there's really nothing new under the sun, but for our reference, living in, in uh, the 2000s, we see that the marriage scenario is trying to be restructured. Well, that's not going to work. We see the disaster of that sort of idea on a regular basis. And so we need to come back to basics and come back to what we truly know, you and I truly know, that we've got to get back to God's design. That's the only answer. The longer we linger in that, the more damage in people and in children there's going to be. 
So we've got to wake up to this reality that moms and dads are important and they're to be under one roof functioning in the best ability that we can. So God's design, a man and a woman. Likewise, as the dad brings masculinity and courage, additionally, the father is the spiritual leader of the household. Some have even said that fathers are the pastor of the house. Do you realize that, fellas? And I know that you do. You're well taught. You're mature men in Christ. You know that you're the spiritual leader. You know that you're the pastor of your household. You bring that authority. And yet you, being the pastor of your household, are under the authority of Jesus Christ. So knowing that, you and I, fellas, as men of Christ, we desire to be more like Jesus, don't we? That's our function. I mean, we opened our eyes this morning and the first thing we said, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me. And he did. Because we said, Holy Spirit, God, Holy Spirit, I need you. And he filled us. And then we prepared our day accordingly, however that gets defined in your household. We did it as spirit-filled men. Praise the Lord. So as God-fearing men, under the authority of Jesus Christ, we are able to confidently say to our kids, and our wives, of course, but to our kids, hey, follow me as I follow Christ. I know each and every man in here can confidently say that because you're diligently desiring to be more like Christ. And so we say that with confidence, we don't do it with perfection. That's impossible, isn't it? But we repent from our foolishness. We pick ourselves back up and we say, Lord, I need a do-over. And the Lord says, great, let's start all over again. So the father being the spiritual leader of the household is guided by Jesus Christ filled with the Holy Spirit unto the glory of God the Father. What a blessing. So as men, as you begin to handle this section of scripture in Deuteronomy 6, when you begin to handle it even more than you already have, you'll, you will quickly begin to discover that in our book of Deuteronomy, the Lord speaks through Moses three different times concerning this exact subject that we're handling this morning in chapter six. We see that the Lord speaks through Moses this exact subject in chapter four. We see, of course, that Moses is is being inspired by the Holy Spirit in chapter six. And then likewise, in the book of Deuteronomy, we see that this whole subject matter is repeated once again in chapter 11. So let's see, by my count, that's three different times the Lord is speaking to us as parents and then specifically for our context as fathers. The Lord is speaking to us three different times in one book about pouring in to our kids. Three times. That's an important subject, huh? That's important. All of a sudden, when the Lord is speaking to us more than once, I mean, when he speaks to us once, it's important, but then he speaks to us twice, it's doubly important, but now we get the third one. Wow, it's out of the park now. We want to really understand what the Lord is speaking to us, speaking through Moses. This is important, and we get that just by this little context in Deuteronomy, let alone the whole rest of the Scripture. I mean, we're not even going to touch on Ephesians and touch on other things like that. But we get it in this small little section. Wow, Lord, this is important. And we can truly imagine in our mind the Lord saying, oh, yeah, very important. So no matter what your circumstance is, if you've fathered a child and whatever, however your life is, is defined, you are to pour into that child. That's your job. It's not my job. Oh, I'll assist. It's not the children's ministry's job. Oh, we'll assist. We will come alongside you and we gladly do that. In fact, there are times I I look at some of the material coming up on the next Sunday and I think, gee, I want to be under this study. This is kind of fun. 
You know, they're building pyramids and doing stuff today. Gee. But we will assist you and we'll be glad to help. But you know what? At the end of the day, they're your kids. We're giving them back to you. We get them for an hour, a couple hours a week. And we don't intend to take your job. We will help you. We will come alongside you. But they're your kids. We love them like they're our own. But it, in an hour, in an hour and a half, you're going to go pick up your children. And we're going to gladly say, hey, man, this is what we did today. Your kids responded in this regard. And man, have great conversation on the drive home. We know you will. But we're here to assist. So, it does, so don't think that you're going to come in July and dump your kids off at VBS. We'll gladly take them for a couple of hours and, and pour into them, but you are the ones that are going to embellish what's happening. You're gonna to listen to them as you pick them up at 8.30 and the con consecutive days. You're gonna pick them up and say, hey, what happened today at Vacation Bible School? And they're gonna say, man, this is what's going on. And so that's your role. So don't think that you're dumping it on us because that's not what we've been called to do. We've been called to assist you and we'll be glad to do so. But you're the primary teacher, dad. And of course, mom comes alongside, but dad, you're it. You're the pastor of the household. You're the spiritual leader. It's on you. The Lord's not gonna say, gee, that VBS didn't do you right, did it? The Lord's not gonna say that at all. The Lord's gonna say, how did you do in fathering your children? And you're gonna have to respond and you'll respond accordingly. So this is an important thing that the Lord is speaking to us today in, in chapter six, let alone the whole, the whole book of Deuteronomy, let alone the whole Bible. Now in verse five, we'll go back to verse five here in Deuteronomy six, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Well, how do we love the Lord God with all our heart, soul, and strength. How do we do that? Well, first and foremost, first and foremost, we must have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's the first thing that has to be accomplished. Trying to do it any other way, as we've already proven to ourselves very well, fails. We can only love the Lord God with our heart, soul, and strength through a personal relationship with Christ. That's the only way. These other sorts of things that are offered as a duplicate scenario, we know it doesn't work. We've tried, we've tried them. And it's been a disaster. So we love the Lord God with our heart, soul, and strength by giving our hearts to Jesus Christ. That's how we begin that process. Then once we give our lives to Jesus Christ, then we begin to learn to love God with all our heart. It's a process. It's a learning process. And God has given us the appointed time of our lives to allow that to be worked out because it's a process. We go on to read, these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Did you get that word there, command? I command you today. That idea of commanding, it's not like, well, hey, if you feel like it. Oh, if you're not too tired. Hey, if you got nothing better to do. You know, when our drill sergeant gave us a command, there wasn't one of us in this room that argued with him, did we? We just jumped. And that's technically what Moses is saying here. Hey, I command you today, these realities to love the Lord shall be in your heart. Place it there. Moses can't place it there. Position yourself, expose yourself, Moses is saying. You better figure this out. But expose yourself to the Lord. Verse seven, now these truths Moses goes on, shall be taught. You will teach these, these truths of your heart. You will teach them diligently. Not casually, not when you have time, not when the football game's over necessarily. 
You will teach these truths diligently, constantly, all the time. Whenever you think of it, and oh, think of it a lot. Because the Spirit of God is going to be prompting you. You know that prompting. I've sat with everyone long enough to know. You know when the Lord is telling you something. So hey, teach these things diligently to your children. Our beloved brother Kona entered into glory late Tuesday night. And I know that not everybody has heard that, that reality, this is breaking news. It's been going very fast and it was a huge surprise to us. So as we gather corporately, we wanted to just pass on the information that Kona has entered into glory. Totally blew our minds, we had no idea. George and I just Monday went over to visit Kona. He was out of his bed, he was in the chair and George and I went over there and we visited and we were having a great time. We were having a lot of laughs and goofing around. And Kona was doing most of the talking. I mean, he's got tubes coming out of every orifice out of his body. But yet he is upbeat. And he is telling George and I, he says, you know, guys, I can't wait to get out of the hospital because you know what? I can't wait to get back over to the skateboard park over here and speak to the young people over here. I miss them dearly. Oh, I can't wait to get back and strum the guitar, man. I can't wait to come back. And remember how he used to play and he'd just go, glory, glory. And he'd just start playing. I, he said, I can't wait to get back and start playing music with you guys. I can't wait to get back in the fellowship. And we're just beaming, just listening to our brother, just upbeat. He said, man, God's so good. And I just can't wait to get home. And we were so excited. Brought so much joy to us on that Monday afternoon. And then as I began to, George and I began to look around the room, we started seeing these hand-painted posters all around the room, the little construction paper and crayons and felt-tip pins and things. And they, all, they were all get well soon cards. Papa, get well soon. We're praying for you. We love you. And then down below, a psalm, Psalm 20, Psalm 150, just all kinds of psalms. And I'm just thinking, man, Lord, this man... He has poured into his kids, and this is the fruit of that. They love their grandpa. The kids love their dad. The granddaughters are just there. I mean, it was just an amazing thing. And George and I are just sitting there listening to this man. He said, man, I can't wait to get out of here so I can get back to work. And we're just, we're humbled. We're just thinking, who are we? I mean, this guy is a great leader. And Kona, rest assured, he died as a good soldier with his boots on. Amen. He did. He did. And it was evident in that hospital room. It couldn't be denied. It was thick as thieves. I mean, it was just amazing. And the next day, I mean, we had, George and I had no idea that 24 hours later I'd get a phone call. Tuesday night, hey, Kona just 60 seconds ago died. What? That's, I mean, wow, okay. And so we're, Connie and I are over there in a few minutes, and we get there, and there's Kona's tent. I mean, that's Kona's tent. But he's gone. He's gone. I mean, I even went over to his leg, and I shook his leg. I said, really, Lord? And he said, yeah, really. But then I started realizing, Lord, this man has poured into more lives than we will ever know. And you know what's gonna be evidence of that? It's, we're gonna be evidence how much this guy touched people for the Lord because we were gonna have the memorial here. We can't. This venue's too small. We're looking for another venue right now and you, we will keep you posted. But again, this is a fast moving thing. We will get you the information as it comes. Please monitor Facebook and Instagram because it's the best way that I can get a hold of folks. I mean, I'm limited. And so I wanna use the tools that God has given us and that's electronic social media. And you know what, if you're not on social media, and this is a prophecy, social media is not going away. So you need to get involved in it. It's not going away. Learn it. Because if you don't, you're gonna be left behind. We don't want anybody to be left behind. If I can learn how to navigate social media, 
you'll do it 10 times faster, okay? But as we prepare to memorialize Kona, we with great joy receive the reality of his legacy. Remember we were talking about Moses' legacy last week in the book of Hebrews? Kona's legacy will live on because he diligently taught the truths that God put in his heart. He taught them to his kids and he taught them to his grandkids. And then he taught them to the, those in the ministry that he represented, whether it was at the skate park, whether it was at the worship, whether it was at the Agape Way meeting. He diligently was a fountain of truth up until the day he died. Wow. Teach these truths diligently to your children and you shall talk of these truths when you sit in your house, Moses tells us. When you walk by the way, you talk about these truths. While you lie down and when you rise up, as you put your babies down, you bless them. As they get up in the morning and you receive them into the, out of the bed, you say, hey, bless you, my son, my daughter, my grandkids, whatever. And you just encourage them. You shall bind these truths of God as a sign on your hand. And I know there's many people in this room this morning, when you saw your father's hand coming toward you, some of you actually recoiled. That's a sad scenario, but that can be reversed today. And so Moses is saying, you shall bind God's truths under your hands. That way, when you reach out to your kids from this moment on, they're going to say, I want to receive that blessing from my dad, from my grandfather, whatever the case may be. I want to receive that. These things can be changed. If that's not the case today, it changes today, right? You hold that hand of blessing out, and then they receive that from you, dad pastor of the house, spiritual leader, under the guidance of God the Holy Spirit, accountable to Jesus Christ, unto God the Father. That's what happens today. What a blessing. These truths shall be as frontlets between your eyes. So in other words, when you look out into the world, you have a biblical world view because you're looking through the prism of your Bible. You don't take someone's opinion. You don't take someone's idea. You don't listen to somebody at, at, at coffee break giving their ideas and say, gee, I think I'll apply that into my life. No, you say, what does the Bible say? Because there's a lot of great marketing. You know, marketing is a multi-billion dollar business. Billion. And people want to market their point of view to you. And so, but if you're looking at their opinion through the Bible, you can see, oh, wait a minute, that's flawed. What are you talking about? Are you holier than I? No, the Bible disagrees with your opinion. Stand confidently in that reality. Mature Christian church and get out and about and start being prepared to give that answer. No, that's not what scripture says, so therefore, friend, in love, you're wrong. Now, we're not gonna fight over it, we're not gonna arm wrestle, but I'm just gonna tell you, you're wrong, because I'm looking at my life, at, at, at my world, through the biblical worldview. Therefore, I can never fail, ever. That's pretty confident. So bind these truths as frontlets between your eyes. This is great counsel. Wow, great exhortation. Finally, Moses tells us in verse nine, you shall write these truths of God. You'll write them on the doorposts of your house and even on your gates. So when your children rise up and they're ready to go about their day, heading to school, heading to work, whatever, hey, remember, God loves you. Okay, Dad, thanks. And follow them out the door as they open up the, the gate of the property. And remember, Jesus loves you and I do too. 
That's what Moses is saying. You put that in your kids' heads. You let it ring in their earring all day long. In their hearing all day long. All day. Diligently. And then when they come home, guess what? The hand of blessing. And they're going to go, great. Give it to me, Dad. I had a tough day. I had a tough day. I need that exhortation, Dad. Not a problem. In chapter 4 of Deuteronomy, verse 9, Moses tells us like this, Take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself. Why? Lest you forget. Moses is reminding us, hey, take heed. Because you are the example, Dad. You. So take heed and diligently keep yourself. Because as we've been looking at the book of Hebrews, and we'll return to as the Lord tarries next Sunday, we remember that the Hebrew audience was encouraged, hey, don't neglect your salvation. And we've, we discovered why, because you're beginning to drift away the book of Hebrews. And so this is not a new thing. Moses is saying way back, thousands of years prior, hey, diligently keep yourself lest you forget. I forgot is not an excuse. Hey, you didn't pick me up after the ball game. Oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah, everything's fine then. Uh-uh. Don't, we don't get to forget we don't get a pass when we forget. Don't neglect, diligently keep dads. And as you do that, wives respond. And as you team up with your wife, then the kids get the double blessing, dad. But it begins with you, dad. So define yourself in Christ. And dads, be brothers in Christ. Get accountability with other men. Don't you dare say that you're going to do it on your own and expect you to think that you're going to get the, the nod from me. Oh, that's a great idea. Don't, don't look for that. You know already you're going to hear, hey, I'm going to do this on my own, and you, you know what you're going to hear from me. Bad idea. You already know that. Get accountability with brothers in Christ. Be a better dad. If I can invite the worship team up to join me, how appropriate this morning we are able to celebrate in communion. Celebrate this Father's Day, hopefully being reminded, first of all, our responsibility as dads, it's huge. Three times in the book of Deuteronomy alone, we are reminded to be a good dad. Three times. And we've barely even turned any pages yet. So we see the importance of this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength was what we were commanded this morning to be reminded of. You know, there, are, there is quite assuredly we prepare ourselves for the a group of believers in our midst this morning that have been neglected. There's no question in my mind. There is a group here that have been neglected, but as we close this morning, I want us to always remember as we close with Psalm 146, verse 8. Psalm 146, verse 8 reads accordingly. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and the widow. But the way of the wicked he turns upside down. Whatever your experience with your earthly father has been, whether it good or bad, if you need to forgive, please forgive. And forget, if it's been a glorious relationship, praise the Lord and remind your, remind your dad one way or another how much you love him. He's an important, vital 
person in your life. We're grateful for that. And know that your heavenly Father will be glorified in your response of today. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And just admit to him, Lord, I need you. Join us by standing. We're gonna go out asking the Lord to awake our soul this morning. Allow us to apply this exhortation in our lives. What do I do with this material, Lord? Show me, and he will. If you need prayer, join us up front. If you need coffee, join us in the coffee shop. In the meantime, have a great week in the Lord. We'll see you Wednesday as we continue through the book of Psalms. I love you. We love you. Awake my soul.